in the world of, uh, of architecture. <laughs> Our next speaker needs little introduction. One of the true godfathers of sustainable building design, his firm has the largest portfolio of built green projects in North America, having received endless awards, including six Governor General awards and 11 Lieutenant Governor General awards. He is the founder and recent chair of the, of the Canada Green Building Council and has devoted much of his time to his profession, to his community, and to the advancement of sustainable education and practices. In 2005, he was invested as a member of the Governor General's Order of Canada, the country's highest civilian award that recognizes a lifetime of outstanding achievement, dedication to the community, and service to the nation. Please welcome Peter Busby. So this talk is about what inspires us. The first American in space, Gus Grissom, in 1961, brought excitement to a young boy. The success of technology and science has paralleled my life. Man on the Moon, the first PC in 84, the first fax in 87, the cell phones, and the internet, and an interest in British high-tech architecture that you'll see later. But it was also the 60s and 70s, a time of vigorous debate, I'm on the right, a struggle between conservatives and liberals, civil rights for a third of Americans with black skin, for women's equality and a place in society. The debate shaped my convictions, my liberal ideas, and my social democratic values. It was also a time of the Vietnam War. Lenin brought us peace and love in the war. Music is with us always. It bound a generation together. Soul music, anti-war music, love and freedom and sexual liberation of rock and roll. We felt our beliefs deeply. Our commitments are for life. I went on to study political science and philosophy at the University of Toronto. This study further defined a set of values, a definition of right and wrong in my own mind. It gave me a moral and ethical position for all matters, including the environment, a determination to go out and do the right thing with our lives. But I also had to put food on the table, so I became a drug owner in my spare time. <laughs> Not a very noble activity, but it gave me a work ethic, work ethic uh, I drove my independence and eventually led to the creation of my own firm. I love construction, I still do. My hobby is to build things. Doing construction, I've met architects that complain about my work, but they work on my interest. Uh, architects could be principled and focused to do the right thing. At the university, I met a young professor, Ray Cole, who still teaches at UBC. He introduced me to the fragile and precarious future of the biosphere in which we live and that architects, engineers, and owners were blissfully ignorant of their complicity and responsibility. Ray showed me we could do a lot about this through environmental design. So began a career-long relationship and friendship. I went to work for Norman Foster in the UK. The boundless energy of this, this man overwhelmed me. I learned about beauty in his eyes, systems thinking, elegance, simplicity, details, and I learned how to polish the work as an architect. While working there, uh, I developed a submission to the House of the 80s London Times competition in 1979. This is my own work. This uh, section shows radiant slabs, active and passive solar heat pumps, uh, wind power, interior plants for fresh air. This was 30 years ago. Whilst there, as I mentioned, for Bucky Fuller tonight, whilst at Foster's, we met and worked with Bucky Fuller on a climate uh, uh, an environmental laboratory for an office, including natural ventilation, stratification, thermal dynamics, and the weight of your building and became a design element. It made a profound impression on us all. I started my own practice here in Vancouver in 1984, opened an office that I built myself on Granville Street, which was then quite seedy, the home of prostitution and other issues. I followed through with my social commitment by bringing architecture on the street at that time and in that location. Worked with business associations, city hall, changed the zoning, and for years, I for change on that street. Twenty years ago, we designed this building, District North Vancouver City Hall. It has a demographic organization, open and transparent, uh, around a central courtyard. The hallmarks of our designer in this early work the steel and wood trusses designed by Fastenet, operable windows, sunshades, louvers, and industrial design. 
Industrial design has been part of our practice from the beginning. Design furniture, lights, telephones, parts for buildings, details, things that give our buildings polish and attractions that we hope you enjoy. This is a picture of our group in, this is a picture of our group in, uh, I'm hoping that slide changes. Ah, there it is. This is a picture of our group in 1989. Uh, the core group is still with me. We've stayed together for 20 odd years. They have attracted by they have, were attracted by the progressive employment attitudes, quality for all, our culture of research and innovation in everything we do. They're a great team. Ten years ago, we designed York University Computer Science Building in Toronto, which in 2004 was named the greenest building in the world by World Architecture Magazine. It has daylighting everywhere, natural ventilation, operable windows, all the materials in it are healthy. We even knew the carbon content of the concrete in the building. This is all pre-lead for those architects in the audience. We've been interested in form all along. In particular form that comes from nature, natural systems found in nature, the wing of a bird, the stem of a flower. We love this shape, the structure, the efficiency, and the simplicity of this 80-year-old canoe which we have hanging in our office. It's deeply admired by all. Our interest in form is given change to our ideas about systems. Selecting the right material for the right use, just as in nature. Softer, warmer solutions. Software, too, is changing what we can draw and how we shape our environments. Systems thinking in buildings has given away to systems thinking in, in, in communities. This is the diagram of the systems at Dockside Green in Victoria, the first biomass co-gen district energy system in North America. Here, from coming from William McDonald's cradle-to-cradle -cradle ideology, we were taking society's waste and making goods like energy, heat, electricity, biodiesel, and compost. We've had a long relationship with Dr. John Robinson out at UBC. We've designed four centers for the interactive research on sustainability the last of which is finally getting built and will open this summer. This is a culmination of, uh, of our knowledge at the moment in how to make low carbon, carbon free, carbon positive, and energy neutral buildings, and it lives up its own energy. At Van Dusen, we've taken the same systems approach, uh, where a building doesn't use energy resources at all, but it does good in its operations. It's carbon positive, energy positive, and water positive. Uh, but what's interesting about Van Dusen is the ecological and biological systems that are part of the design. 400 years since the Industrial Revolution uh, and man and nature have been at war ever since. Here is a project where, where natural systems, ecological, horticultural, biological, improve due to human interaction. Humans, na humans and nature can, can live in harmony together.